Okay, let's do this example here. We have the integral of x to the 3 halves plus 2x plus 1. And again, the dx here tells us what the variable of integration is. So solution. So in this case, we can go ahead and just jump into it and use the formulas. So we're going to go straight to the integration. So here we can use the power rule. We actually have a 3 halves. And remember, the power rule says that whenever you have uh, x to a power, as long as that power is not negative 1, you're basically adding 1 here to the exponent. So 3 halves plus 1, let me come over here and write it, 3 halves plus 1, that's the same thing as 3 halves plus 2 halves. And I'm writing it that way so that we can actually you know, perform the addition. Um, 3 plus 2 is 5, so you get 5 halves. So what you would do is you would write x, the 5 halves, and then you would divide, and then you put the 5 halves down here. Okay, plus, same thing here, we have a number. Remember, when you have a number in front of an x, it just hangs out, so 2. And we have x. The exponent here is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. And again, we divide by the 2. Again, the power rule, right? You add 1 and divide. Add 1 and divide. So we added 1 to 3 halves. We got 5 halves. We divided by 5 halves. Added 1 to the 1. We got 2. We divided by 2. Whenever you have a number by itself, remember, just tack on the x. So 1 times x is just x. Not correct. We're still missing the plus c. Typically, you don't want to leave your answer like this, right? It's not simplified, and you have a complex fraction here. So let's clean it up. What's happening here is a division problem. We have this divided by 5 halves. When you divide, you really multiply by the reciprocal. So this is really 2 fifths times x to the 5 halves. Boom, this goes away. Plus x squared plus x. And then plus our constant of integration, capital C. And that would be an acceptable uh, final answer uh, in this example here. So super, super key. So again, just adding adding 1 here. So 2 halves plus 3 halves is 5 halves. Divide by 5 halves. 1 plus 1 is 2. Divide by 2. You have a constant by itself. You just tack on the x, and then you have a plus c pro. And then these cancel. This is a division problem. When you divide by 5 halves, you're really multiplying by the reciprocal. Let's do another one. The best way to get good at integration is just to do a bunch of integrals. I mean, there's no better way um, to get good at it. I want to emphasize a point about fractions, so I'm going to do this. This is negative 1 half plus 1 half dx. Okay, let's make one up. So here we can use the power rule twice. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Solution. So we're going to add 1 to negative 1 half. So that's going to be negative 1 half plus 1 which is really negative 1 half plus 2 halves, which is 1 half. So it'll be x to the 1 half divided by 1 half plus, same thing here, we have a 1 half. We're adding 1. So it's 1 half plus 2 halves, which is 3 halves. So it's x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. And then we have our constant of integration, capital C. And then again, we have these two division problems, right? Whenever you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal. So dividing by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So this will be 2x to the 1 half, which you can write as the square root of x. It's up to you. Plus, and then dividing by 3 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. So this is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. So that would be an acceptable answer. Now, this is not how I would do the problem. So I'm just doing it this way to show you. So let me show you what I would do when we're faced with a situation like this. I would take a shortcut. Let's say we have x to the 1 third plus x to the 2 sevenths dx. Just dealing with these really bad fractions that no one wants to deal with. Let's do it. Solution. 
So we're adding one, right? We're adding one and dividing. We're using that power rule. So we have x to the one third, and then here we have x to the two sevenths. So here it's one third plus one. So think of it as a number over three. So one third plus three thirds, so four thirds. So it'll be x to the four thirds, okay? And we're dividing by four thirds. But when you divide by four thirds, you're really multiplying by three fourths. Boom, so you skip that step. So whenever you divide by a fraction, you can automatically turn it into multiplication by the reciprocal. Super, super powerful, right? So powerful, it saves you so much time. So again, we add one to the one third, which is four thirds, we divide by four thirds, but instead of dividing by four thirds, since it's gonna require cleanup anyways, just multiply by the reciprocal. Same thing here, plus, we have two sevenths, plus one, so think of seven, uh, think of one as a number over seven, which is seven sevenths, so it's gonna be nine sevenths. So this will be x to the nine sevenths divided by nine sevenths, so it'll be seven ninths times x to the nine sevenths. Again, it's x to the nine sevenths, then you divide by nine sevenths, but you're really multiplying by the reciprocal, which is seven ninths. But that's not it. We're still missing something super important. It's the plus C. So yeah, so whether or not you're comfortable skipping this step is up to you. It's a personal choice. If you wanna show it every time, that's fine, right? We did that uh, up here, right? We divided by one half, here we divided by three halves, and then we flipped it when we multiplied by the reciprocal. So it's up to you uh, whether you show um, those those steps or not. Let's do another one. Uh, how about something like this, a little bit simpler? One over x cubed. So this is one where you can't just use the power rule right away, right? Remember the power rule works on x to a power. Here we have one over x to a power. So what you have to do here is you have to rewrite your integrand. You know how good it is to have a name for that? So the integrand is this here. It's called the integrand. So we have to rewrite it. So because we're not integrating yet, we still have to write the integral symbol, so solution. So what we can do is we can bring this upstairs, and when we do that, the exponent will become negative. So this will become a negative three, and then here we have a dx. And so now we can apply the power rule. So when we apply the power rule, we drop the integral sign, we take one and we add it to the exponent. So it'll be x, so let's see, negative three plus two is negative one, uh, is, is negative two. Negative three plus one is negative two, misspoke. We're adding one, negative three plus one is negative two, and then you divide by negative two, and then plus our constant of integration. Okay, this is equal to. So now what you can do here is, you can write this as negative one half, x to the negative two, plus our constant of integration, capital C. And that would be a perfectly acceptable way to write the answer. Some people would prefer to do this. You could certainly do that. And you could certainly do something like this. I probably wouldn't do this, not a fan. I prefer to do it this way, the easiest way, at least in my opinion.